What's up guys, Persian Predicts, and today is going to be my first video for a while again. Obviously, I keep being inconsistent with these uploads, but it is what it is. But today we're going to be doing the review for today's game. You're on three, Hong Kong one. Yes, we've managed to concede a goal to fucking Hong Kong. Um, so I'm just going to talk about the game. I'm going to do videos on... On the Asian um, on the Asian World Cup qualification, um, as much as I, as much as I can, um. So yeah, there you go. Um. So, the game ended three one. The top of my head, our first goal scorer was Adi Hodi Zade from a tightly uh, close angle. Great confidence to take the strike. Um. Obviously, got himself in that position with his own ability. Um, to get past the man, bit lucky the way it dropped to him, but still, he had a go, he got in the position, and he had a shot from a ridiculously tight angle that no one in. Um, that was the first half, 1-0. Second half, um, I think it was Tyrone, he had just about got a head on um, to the path of Vahid Amiri, who shot, and it deflected into the top corner past the goalkeeper. And then the third goal came around the 84th minute, I think it was. When Kodos um, played it to Mehdi Torabi, who was one-on-one -on -one with their right-back, in which he rinsed the right-back, not Megdim, him, sent him on the ground, and then is with a weaker left foot, uh, put it across to substitute Kali Mansari Fad um, to get the third goal for a tap-in. And then straight after that, a minute later, um, it's not even on camera, so we actually can't see the full build-up to the goal. Uh, but yeah, the it was it was just it was basically like a kickoff glitch goal from FIFA. Like we scored in the eighty fourth minute and they scored in the eighty fifth minute, in which they went down the other end. I assume uh, they got it outside the box. They put the ball in. It went. It evaded all of our centre halves. Canoni was nowhere to be seen, and um, their player. I don't know if he was their number nine. I don't really care to be honest with you. Their player got the header on. It hit the bar and under. It went past the line. Beirovan couldn't get it, and then he couldn't get it the second time, even though it was already past the line in the first place. And just to make sure, he definitely got it over the line um, at the second time as well. And uh, Hong Kong got a goal um, and got a consolation. Um, so my, my review on the game is this. Um, it's hard to review. It's hard because, of course, if we play the way we did in that game um, against Arak and Bahrain, we will be in a bit of trouble. I'm not going to say we're going to definitely lose or even draw. We still could win playing like that against Arak and Bahrain because anything can happen in football. We don't know. Like You can play rubbish in football and win. So we don't know that for sure. That's why I'm not going to say we're screwed or anything like that. Well, no, we're not. We're not screwed. It's just... It ain't great. Um, <sighs> the performance wasn't great from Iran. Um, I thought we started off the game quite well. Like at the start, I thought we were sharp, but I don't know. There was just something missing with that performance, and I think the midfield was a big part. Um, the front two were rubbish today. They were rubbish. Um, Osmond and Tarami, they did nothing. Um, I've seen a lot of mixed reviews on Maharami today. Some were saying he's very good, best player in the first half. I saw someone say, I don't know how you can really say that, but. Um, I don't, I don't know. Maharami was okay, I guess. I, th I thought his crossing was quite poor. Um, Vahid Amiri playing at left back was r he was rubbish at left back. Vahid Amiri. He then scored um, a deflected goal to get to get us the two 0 lead, and then um, Milad Mohamedi came on at left back. So Vahid Amiri was shifted into the midfield area. I think in place of Ezat uh, because he also came off um, at that time as well, and. In the midfield, you can definitely see he's a lot better. I actually still don't think Vahid Amiri is good as a midfielder. I don't think Vahid Amiri should be playing for Iran. Um, and when he played in midfield for Iran against uh, Surya, I wasn't very really happy. But at the same time, he's clearly better in midfield than what he is at left-back. At left-back, he ain't good. He ain't good enough. And let me tell you this for a fact. Defensively, that guy will get found out against Arak and Bahrain if they have anything about him. Uh, so he can't play left back. Milad Mohamedi isn't the best player defensively by any means, but he's he's better defensively than Vahid Amiri. I'll tell you that for sure. And um, Va Milad Mohamedi is a better left back than Vahid Amiri. But if if Amiri plays, it has to be off the bench, coming on as a midfielder, maybe to make shift. Um, in that regard, because I don't want him to start in general. At left back, Milad Mohamedi is better. I think Jafar Samani is better in midfield. 
Ezat Allahi, Nur Allahi, even players like Esan Ahash Shafi I'd have over him in midfield. Um, and at left wing, we've got Torabi, Qaedi, Salman Qudus, Ali Reza Jahanbash. Qudus, I wouldn't really see down the wing, but I'd prefer all of Torabi, Qaedi, Jahanbash, and Qudus on the left hand side in, um, in comparison to Vahid Amiri. So, Vahid Amiri for me is my third choice left back, my fourth choice central midfielder, and my fifth choice left winger. The guy shouldn't be playing. Um, but you, you know what? I'll give him credit. Ever since when he scored that goal, he was then shifted to midfield because Milad Mohamed, he played, um, was brought in as a left back, so he went into midfield. I think in place of Ezra Talai's decision, and he did very well. He, he did well. You know what I mean? Um, sorry, excuse my hair. It's in a horrible state. But yeah, um, that's that. I think that's that. To be honest with you, so Vai Damri, that's that. He shouldn't be starting next game. He shouldn't be. Um, defensively. If we got the clean sheet and we didn't concede that goal, I wouldn't have said anything defensively because we didn't really have anything to do. But then the second half hit, and in the last 20 minutes, I remember two things happened. Two things. One of them, for a throw, they literally put a simple ball. They, they threw it down. They played it a little bit on the right-hand side, and they just pinged the ball from the right-hand side straight to the left-hand side to the back post. And Sardeg Maharami, Sardeg Maharami didn't mark his man, and it was literally a free header for Hong Kong. From an angle, but it was still a free header. He still, if he got on target, probably would have scored. And he missed it. He dragged it wide. He dragged his his header wide. And then the and then the second thing was the goal. Literally, like, I didn't see the whole build up. I don't know what happened. I do actually want to see the goal. But even then, when the ball was played in, there wasn't any pressure on the ball holder. He put the ball into the box. Everyone missed it, which is embarrassing. Bayron van der Dano, should he have come out for it? But there's just a lot of question marks about that goal defensively, and that's just from the little footage that I've seen and that most of us have seen. I want to see the full goal. I want to see what what even happened, because the cameras didn't pick up on it, because it was basically a kickoff which goal. Um, so yeah, so Bayron van um, had nothing to do but the goal, in which I think he was a little suspect. So I, again, I'll always say Abed Zaidé should be starting over him, but that's me. Many other people as well, but that's me. Um, left back should be Mirdad Mohamadi, but if Vahid Amri keeps playing there, he scored a goal. He probably will be starting next game. It's it's annoying, but we move. Um, Centre halves: Kanoni and Shoja. Shoja, I'm happy with Shoja. I like Shoja. He's calm. Even that game, sometimes defensively, he stepped out of his centre half role, um, came a little forward onto the pitch. He was solid defensively. He was he was solid. Kanani, I didn't really see much in that game except from the goal, in which Kanani was one of the main people at fault for the goal. What was he doing? Like, where was he? What was he doing? Why was he jumping late like that? He was nowhere near the ball. And that was the only time he was tested defensively, Kanani, and he fucked it against Hong Kong. You know? I, Shojo, I don't know about Shojo and the goal. I need to see it again. So, yeah, man, the centre of partnership for me definitely should be uh, Shoja Khalilzade and Majid Hosseini. If not, Morteza Poreliganji and Majid Hosseini as it was in the World Cup, etc. But I ain't the manager. Right back, um, we had Sadeq Maharami. We have to stick with him. We, we absolutely have to stick with him. Um, I have no problem with that. But if we want to, obviously, if energy comes into it and... You know, tiredness, fatigue comes into it. Daniel Esmaili Far, you know, Sardeg, in my opinion, wasn't great that game. Esmaili Far can definitely do a job. Um, so yeah, that then we move into the pivot. Um, Ahmad Noor, I don't, I, I don't see what the guy does. He sits there. He's, I don't really know what he does. Like, and people say he's good at shooting. Is he? Like, is he that good at shooting? I don't know. Um. He takes some long shots, it goes, and sometimes he's had a poor season. He's missed so many chances uh, for first place. He, he, he was one of the ones who cost them in the Asian Champions League final by conceding the penalty in a stupid manner. Uh, thank God, because I missed El Ali, but it's, it's just weird. I don't know. I, I really don't know. Um, Nur Allahi, I think we can get better than him. Mami de Nur Afkan, I think, can go far with this, um, with this team. He's obviously not in the squad, so the next time we'll see Omid Nuraf can play for Iran at the bare minimum is in three months time in, in September when we I assume kick off um the last round of World Cup qualifiers if we even get there. 
Um, so that's Nur Allah. Yeah, I think we can get better than him. Ali Karim isn't in the squad, but he's better than him in my opinion. Omi Donoraf can stand, uh, um, central midfield um, can play better than him. Um, he's a ball carrier as well. He's strong. He's fast. He's good on the ball. I'd prefer to see Haj Safi, and I, I don't really rate Haj Safi nowadays. I I I don't know. I, that's a lie, actually. I wouldn't prefer Haj Safi over him, but still, I think we can get better than Ahmad Donoraf here. I think he's just a bit average. But that's my opinion. Um, Ezatollahi, Saeed Ezatollahi playing defensive midfield. Obviously, I'm so happy to see this guy back. I'm so, so happy to see this guy back for Iran. Um, for me, he should be the, the, the number one player on the team sheet every time. And I've said this before, or one of them at least, until I go on to the player who played on the right-hand side today. He probably is that player now, the, the main <clears throat> Sorry, the main guy. Um, Ezra Salah, he wasn't great, in my opinion. But you can see what he's trying to do. I don't mind him having that one-off game. Because you can still try. He gets the ball. He plants his territory. You can see he's trying to spray balls into the box. We have Tarim and Azmoun there. You can see he's trying to play them balls into Azmoun. He did in that first half. You can see what Ezra Salah he is. And defensively, he's, he's a beast, man. The guy is hard to get past. And we saw that today. The only reason why I don't think Ezra Salah was very good today... Um, and this isn't the reason of why he did it, it's just what he did. Um, why I think he was poor is because I think defensively, on the ball he wasn't bad at, at all. You can see what he's trying to do. It's hard as well, playing against that low block as a midfielder. You have to be very cautious with your passes because it can get frustrated if you not, if you don't be patient enough. Or if you don't be forward thinking enough and don't take enough risks, then you're not really going to break sides down with that low block. Defensive, the only reason I didn't think Saeed Desatale was very good today is because defensively he was a bit... Like, he was, he was getting in the right position, so I just think he was applying his tackles a little, in a bit of a sloppy fashion, a bit aggressive, um, conceding f uh, fouls. Um, when he easily could have tackled the ball, so, you know, like I have no problem. He should never be benched, absolutely never be benched. He should be um, in that pivot or in a middle three if we ever switch to it. He should be a part of that midfield. He should be a part of that team every single time. He's a brilliant player. He's one of our best players. Today wasn't great, but I saw what he was trying to do. At least he tried. He tried, you know what I mean? And some of the passes he played into the box were very good. Just a, I think the only reason why he wasn't so good today is because defensively he was a bit sloppy. Um, the left-hand side, Ali Reza Jahanbash. I thought defensively, I know this is weird to say, I thought defensively he put a shift in. He was aggressive, especially in the first half, Jahanbash. He got himself around. He was, he was you know, he was again, as I said, he was aggressive. He was getting tackles in. He was doing the defensive job, John Bash, in that first half, just regaining the ball, trying to move things on. But no quality, no quality really from John Bash in that game. He's not found his form. Um, he's not found his form for Brighton ever. He had a decent spell. His purple patch in the last three years as a club, as a club footballer, was a two-game, yes, two-game purple patch against Bournemouth and Chelsea at the start of 2020. End of 2019, start of 2020. That's that was what he did. That was his purple patch. His purple patch with Brighton was two games. What does that tell you? So there you go. Um, I, I, the guy's got quality. He's got goals. He's direct. He's aggressive. I like him. But he needs to find his form. He needs to regain his form. He needs to move clubs. He needs to move clubs. Um, but yeah, I think we'll see more of him in these in these last three very vile games. I think we will see a lot more of him. Um, next. We move on to um, we move on to the right hand side, and I think this was probably man of the match, Ali Rolizadeh scoring the first goal for Iran. Um, I thought it was a class performance. Um, it, considering the circumstances, he was the one who stepped up. He was aggressive. He was trying to take man on. I think he completed the most amount of dribbles in the whole game. Um, so in that regard, he was good. Scored a very good goal. He, he got himself into that position. He scored a very good goal. Um, and I don't really have any problem with him. I don't really want to talk too much about him. Because we all know how good that guy is, man. The guy should be starting every game for Iran. It's as simple as that. And, um, yeah, if Skocic even thinks about dropping him for the next game, then I probably won't even watch the game against Bahrain. That's my opinion. So, the next players we'll talk about are the front two. 
and that's Taremi and Azmoon. Um, Taremi, I didn't see him in the game. I didn't see Taremi at all in the game. I think he got an assist for Vahid Amiru's goal. But I didn't see him in the game. If we're being real, I, d I didn't really see anything of him. Um, I didn't really see nothing, to be honest with you. Yeah, he just wasn't in the game. I'm, I'm just going to completely move on, to be honest. Um, and then I'll talk about Osmond now, and then I'll talk about them as a partnership and my opinions. Um, Osmond next, as I just said. Um, Osmond... Osmond had chances. Osmond had chances that game. He was sloppy. He had chances. It's not that he wasn't getting the service. He was getting the service, and he didn't take his chances. Sorry, if I can... Um, he wasn't getting the... Well, he just wasn't really happening for him. I mean, he got the chances, as I said. He just didn't really take them at all. Um, I thought he tried to pass it to Taremi too much when he got in dangerous areas. Just go for it. Be selfish. You're a centre forward. You've had a cracking season as you did the season before, as you did the season before. You've been brilliant. Why not just be selfish? Like, stop trying to square it to Taremi. Just shoot. Literally, just shoot. There's no reason. Um... Especially when time is cr uh, crowded with Hong Kong players, just shoot yourself. That goalkeeper's dodgy, man. That goalkeeper was dodgy. I saw it. His hand—he had no handling. He had no hand uh, handling capabilities. Um, it was like he was trying to handle a tennis a tennis ball. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't really, I don't really see why we didn't take more shots in that game. To be honest, and my dad made that point during the game. We should have. Um, next, uh, the substitute. So I'm gonna get my computer. To the So, excuse me. Um, trying to find this. Trying to get the substitutes here. Yeah, here you go. So this is from Arya Golbazan. Tweet this out. So the substitutes that came on were Mehdi Torabi, Kaima Antoifad, Kabir Rezaei, Milade Mohammadi, and Saman Kortus. So I'll talk about this. Uh, these five players. So Torabi came on. Torabi came on in place of Ali Reza Jahan Basta on the left hand side, and he was superb. Um, the third goal we scored, he absolutely destroyed their right back. Sent him, drop of the shoulder, through the legs, sent him on the ground, and then with his weaker left foot, pulled it across goal, and Kai Man sorry, Fad was there for the tap in, and he got the assist, simple as that, from the bench. He was good, he was very good. Um, I like Torabi, I like him, I need to see him more, I need to see him more. Kai Man sorry, Fad got the goal, he came on, he got the goal, he had energy, man, he had energy, and that's what you need to see. Uh, Carver Rezo came on, didn't really do anything. Um, Kaiman sorry, Fad had like an overhead kick when it was 3 1. He, he had it after they scored the consolation, Hong Kong. Kaiman sorry, Fad had a, an overhead kick and it was scuffed and it, it nearly dropped to him and he nearly scored. So that would that's obviously disappointing. But um, Kaiman is, I, I, he didn't really do much. That's not a discredit, but it's not a credit either. So that's all I'd say about that. Um, Mohammadi, I thought, I thought was a bit like shaky defensively. Didn't really do too much going forward again. He's just one of them ones. You can't really say much about Milad Mohammadi that game. Um, Samar Kotus, he came on, and when he came on in that midfield, we were shifting the ball a lot better. We got a grip of the game, I thought, at that point. And we always did have a grip of the game, but we got the tempo going at that point, I felt. So I thought he did well. Obviously, he played in a much deeper position, but he was shifting the ball around. Him and Amiri actually combined well in that midfield for the time being. Um, and they actually did well. So I give credit. Um, yeah, overall, I don't really have too much to say. It's 3-1, we won. Um, we have to move on now. Four days we play again against Bahrain. 
Um, I'll tell you the team I want, but I'm not the manager, so this won't happen. And I am going to stick with the 4-4-2. Now, I've, I, obviously, in the group chat, I was talking about how I'd love to see a 4 a 4 2 3 one and some other players who didn't get called up, called up. Um, hint, hint, Ashkan Ejaga. But them days are long gone now. I have to, if I'm being real, sticking with the 4 4 2, I'm going to give you my preferred 11 for the 4 4 2. It, it, considering we will play 4 4 2 in all these games, I will just give you my favourite lineup then. Um, considering we will play the 4 4 2. So in goal, um, Arped Zadeh. But he won't play, but hear me out. Abed Zadeh goal. Left back, Milada Mohamadi. Centre halves, Shoja and Madi Dohaseni. Right back, Moharami. But I wouldn't be opposed to Esmaili Fad playing there. But Moharami, uh, Moharami right back. On the left, Torabi. On the right, Goli Zade. Eza and... Eza and... Oh, I can't know. I, I, I guess I'll say Eza and and Nurullahi again. And then Taremi and Azmoun. I guess that's it. I do want to say many things about what I would like to do, but I'm not the manager and I've got to keep it realistic while still saying my opinion. So that's, it is what it is, like, I, I, I can't really alter too much. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, I want to play 4 2 3 1 with Abbas Ebu Adzor in the number 10 role. It's not happening. It's just not happening. <laughs> it quite literally cannot happen. Same with the Jaga, so that you know, you gotta keep it real. In goal Abed Zadeh, left back, right back, Mila de Mohammadi, Zadeh Maharami, centre halves, Shoja Majid Hosseini. In the pivot, I think we can do a lot better, but we'll just stick with Ezatullahi and Nurullahi because none of them were the worst performers on the day. Torabi left wing, because AJ's not ready, Torabi's ready. And right wing Godi Zadeh. And then up front, Talim and Azmoun. Even though I'd, I'd, I would probably play Ansari Faz over Azmoun. But it won't happen, so I've got to just stick with them two. And that, uh, what I wanted to say about the partnership as well, that partnership doesn't work for me. In fact, it, the, the so-called partnership, they work better on a side when Talim is playing on the left. It's weird, it's, it's stupid, it's so stupid, but... When Taimi plays on the left and Osman plays up front as a sole striker, we play we them two link up better, we play better. I don't wanna see Taimi on the left, but I'm just saying when Carlos Queiroz did that with Taimi on the left and him up front, we were just better, I don't know why, we just were. When them two were two up top, it don't work for me. It don't work. They try to work, they try it, they're not selfish. Sometimes they're a bit too self uh, a bit too selfless if that makes sense or whatever the um, you know what I'm trying to say. But sometimes they're not selfish enough. They try to work. They don't know. That's the problem. So that's everything I have to say. That's 25 minutes of me waffling. There you go. There's a video for you. And yeah, that's it. That's all I have to say, to be honest. Um, I'll do a preview for the Bahrain game. So there. Yeah, that's what I think, to be honest. Um, if you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe. And uh, I'll see you in literally three days. Thank you.